So how many know the story about Pearl Harbor? How many uh, and heard about how it was bombed and everything? Uh, how many know that there's an Air Force field there called Hickam's Field? Well, I do. Yeah, I, I, you know, I heard about it. Well, we're going to talk about Pearl Harbor uh, today a little bit. And probably a story you have never heard. And I, I do that every so often. I make them up sometimes, but I'm not really. I always try to research the best I can to make sure what I tell you is the truth. That's good. Because it's very important. If, if, I, if you think that I'm lying to you, then you're not going to be listening to half the words I'm telling you. So I want to make sure that you understand that I go far and beyond studying to make sure that what is told or what stories are told is backed uh, by other people. Admiral Chester Mimitz. Sunday, December 7th. 1941, Admiral Chester Mimitz was attending a concert in Washington, D.C. He was paid to tell there was a phone call for him. When he answered the phone, it was President Franklin Delano, if you didn't know what the D stands for, Franklin Delano Roosevelt on the phone. He told Admiral Mimitz that he would now be the commander of the Pacific Fleet. Admiral Mimitz flew to Hawaii to assume command of the Pacific Fleet. He landed at Pearl Harbor on Christmas Eve, 1941. There was such a spirit of despair, dejection, and defeat. You would have thought the Japanese had already won the war. And I'm sure that people on the island of Hawaii and the soldiers, the military men that were there, all felt defeat. On Christmas Day, 1941, Admiral Chester Mimitz was given a boat tour of the destruction wrought on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. Big sunken battleships and Navy vessels cluttered the waters everywhere you look. As the tour boat returned to dock, the young helmsman of the boat asked, well, Admiral, what do you think after seeing all this destruction? Admiral Chester Mimitz's reply shocked everyone within the sound of his voice. Admiral Chester Mimitz said the Japanese made three of the biggest mistakes an attack force could ever make. Or God was taking care of America. Which do you think it was? Shocked and surprised, the young helmsman asked, what do you mean by saying the Japanese made the three biggest mistakes an attack force ever made? Mimitz explained. Mistake number one. The Japanese attacked on Sunday morning. Nine out of every ten crewmen of those ships were ashore on leave. If those ships had been lured to sea and been sunk, we would have lost 38,000 men instead of 3,800.
Mistake number two. When the Japanese saw all those battleships lined in a row, they got so carried away sinking those battleships, they never once bombed our dry docks opposite those ships. If they had destroyed our dry dock, we would have had to tow every one of those ships to America to be repaired. Now, you remember 1941, Hawaii was not a state of America. So it would have been towed to America to be repaired. As it is now, though, the ships are in shallow water and can be raised. One tug can pull them over to the dry dock. We can have them repaired and at sea by the time we could have towed them to America. And I already have crews ashore anxious to man those ships. Mistake number three. Every drop of fuel, every drop, of fuel. The United States did not have a storage of fuel on any other island but in Hawaii. Every drop of fuel in the Pacific theater of war is in the top of the ground storage tanks, just five miles away on the hill. One attack, one attack plane could have strapped those tanks and destroyed our fuel supply. That's why I say the Japanese made the three of the biggest mistakes an attack force could make or God was taking care of America. Admiral Chester Mimmons was able to see a silver lining and its situation and circumstance where everyone else saw only despair and defeat. Don't you think that God spared America? When Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, they made one of the biggest mistakes of their life. Because of the mistake, death had come upon the whole human race. There was no one from the earth that could save the human race from death. Talk about despair and feeling defeated. But God did give them a little prophecy as he was kicking them out of the Garden of Eden, told Eve that the woman's seed would bruise the serpent's head. Ooh! But how long did they have to wait? Only a couple thousand years. <laughs> Actually, 4,000 years, almost. So not only did it bring death upon the whole world, but mankind had a penalty for the sin that no one from earth could pay. First penalty that had to be paid. Blood had to be shed by giving his life. That was at least equal to Adam before he sinned. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made Amen. Second penalty was he had to be wounded and bruised. Wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Who can save mankind from this death? 
For this person would have to be born with no sin and commit no sin until paying the price that was required. Only by the grace of God did God give a Savior, Jesus, to save the world. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end promise might be true to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Do we accept the redemption of Jesus to bring us back to God? Jesus died for us. He shed his blood for us. He took the beating for us. Are we willing to accept what he's done for us? That's why in the scripture it says, you must drink my blood and eat my flesh. You must accept what his body has done to free you from death. Do we accept his blood that was shed for you and I? Do we accept his body that was wounded and bruised, including his face marred more than any man and his body form more than the sons of man? Isaiah 52, 14, as many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man. And is form more than the sons of man. He didn't look like a man anymore. His whole body was marred more than the sons. Not just his face marred more than him. His whole body. You know, we have that scripture in the Bible that says all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You would think that mistake of Adam and Eve would be the end of the world. But you have to put your trust in Jesus. All things can work together for good for those that love the Lord. All we have to do, God gave his only begotten son, is to accept Jesus, the son of God. If you never accept Jesus, you do not have to worry about making the three big mistakes. For that will be one of the biggest mistakes you will ever make in this lifetime. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Well, we've seen the Japanese made some really good mistakes, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact it was because of God. You don't have to make the mistake today of not accepting Jesus. Those who never accepted Jesus and had the chance to accept him or, and don't are making the biggest mistake they can ever make. Don't make that big mistake. No. Accept Jesus Amen. today.